does say that I have not seen, neither have ear heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of men the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But if we keep on reading that verse, those verses in Corinthians, Paul tells us, but he has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Hallelujah. So I'm grateful to God today that housed in my spirit is the divine will of God. Again, I want to say that to you on today. I am so grateful on today that housed in my spirit is the divine will will of God. God's desire is already placed in your spirit. And it is up to you, my friends, whether or not you will choose to follow the leading that his spirit is giving you or to reject the leadership that his spirit is giving unto you. But I don't ever want you to think that you are without. I don't ever want you to think that you are serving God with a kind of, if I may use this word, uh, a, a kind of orphan mentality. Jesus said, I will never leave you. He said, I will never forsake you. And God even gave to Joshua a word in Joshua chapter 1. And uh, those verses from verses 1 through 8 or 1 through 9, he begins to share with him the important crucibles, the important nuggets to good success. Success is not predicated just upon who has taught us. Success is not predicated just simply based upon uh, the family that we come from or uh, our size, our height, our financial status, or uh, our ability to navigate through the co community. Your success is based on your obedience to the word of God. And you say, well, pastor, I, I don't, I'm a Christian, but his word is not in me, or I'm a Christian and I feel so lost and I, I feel so, well, I come to assure you today, my sisters and brothers, that housed, hallelujah, housed inside of your spirit lies the mysteries and the treasures of God's word. It, it is in you. Paul said that the word is so close to us, it is so near us, he declares that it is even in our mouth. This may sound kind of strange. It may sound kind of uh, kind of cuckoo and, and, and kind of spooky to some people, but the word of God is in your mouth. Hallelujah. And if you will just open up your mouth, God will begin to give you what to say. If you will just open up your mouth, stop waiting for people to validate you. Stop waiting for people to pat you on the back. Stop waiting for people to give you that extra push. This is a day and time where people are living a life that is very selfish, a life that is very evil. And uh, the Bible even tells us that evil men will wax worse and worse. And so we should not be surprised when people treat you the way that you are treated. But I'm so glad on this morning that housed in my spirit rest the will of God. And I want to encourage you to contact him by faith. I want to encourage you to reach out and touch him by faith. That word, yes, it is in my mouth. You may feel like uh, an orphan, but it's in your mouth. You may feel like you are disconnected. I don't want you to think that because uh, you see pastors and we may look uh, many of us like there's nothing going on in our lives or that we're not having to deal with certain factors and certain situations and certain issues. That is not always the case. We deal with troubles. We deal with problems. We deal with difficulties. But as leaders of today, God has given to us a unique way to deal and to handle those situations. And we're not going to keep it to ourselves. It's not something that you have to pay $1,000 to receive. It's not something that is even available to you on a tax-free weekend for $9.99. It is the free gift, hallelujah, the free gift that God has given unto me his word. And even though I may wake up sometimes in the morning and, 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 and not feel that connected and not feel that close and not feel like he's upon us. We have the assurance 
This is why we cannot trust our feelings. Because your feelings can be so topsy-turvy. As mama used to say, they can be so undependable. But thanks be to God that the just don't walk according to their feelings. Thanks be to God that the just shall live by faith. This is how we live. When people are encouraging you and challenging you to prove what you say. People are challenging you to prove uh, where you're going. You, you don't have to because the word has already done it. The word has already backed you up. And there is enough anointing. Glory be to God in your life and in my life to back up what is being stated. And so to you, my brothers and sisters that are dealing with difficulties in your homes that are dealing with difficulties on the job. Hallelujah. As one brother says, polished, but yet dealing with many areas of persecution. As we deal with those things, you must know that God is never going to allow you to go through those things without giving you a way of escape. I hear people say sometimes that he won't put any more upon us than we are able to bear. But in clarity, the word says that he will not suffer us to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. In other words, he will not necessarily allow us to be tempted above that which we are able to uh, bear. But he will because he is faithful. Oh, yes, he is. Because God is trustworthy, you can depend on him. And I know that there are other gods on a shelf. I know that there are other gods that are wrapped around someone's ankle and that there are other gods that are wrapped around someone's neck and wrapped around someone's wrist. Hallelujah. But those gods are not able to deliver me. Those gods are not able to set me free. Those gods are not able to equip me with the dunamis, they're not able to equip us with the power that is needed to do the work that God has commissioned us to do. And so because he is faithful, you can depend on him. Hallelujah. You can't depend on that porcelain God it, that will crack and fall into many pieces like Humpty Dumpty. But you can depend on our God. You cannot depend on that God that simply hangs on a wall and dangles from a tree, if you will. But you can depend on the true and the living God. He is faithful. He will never, ever allow us to experience anything that you are not able to bear. And I'm not simply saying that you wake up in the morning saying to the enemy, come on, Satan, give me your best shot. Some people say, I told the devil, you come on with it, I'm ready to fight you. You come on with it, I'm ready to get in the, get in the field with you and get into the, get into the court with you. Listen, you have enough anointing and time is far spent. You don't have the time to sit there or to stand there on a on a day-to-day -day basis having these kinds of conversations with the devil. Jesus had a time when he spoke to the enemy and he also had a time when the enemy was doing what he desired and Christ himself remained silent because he knew that he must work the works of him that sent him while it is day because there will come a time when nighttime will appear and when night comes the Bible says no man can work and so I encourage all of you, those of you that are listening to us on the radio, you have tuned in to KGGR 1040 AM. Hallelujah. And then there are those of you that are tuned in that are watching us via live on Facebook or perhaps even on YouTube. We want to say unto you, God is yet on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. God bless you. God bless you. And may the favor of God continue to be upon your life. Yes, as one pastor said, we must leave the enemy alone. Stop waking up in the morning saying, where is the devil? I'm just looking for a demon to fight. You wake up in the morning and purpose in your heart that today is another day that God has given me a chance to do his will. Today is another day that I have been afforded an opportunity to bring someone to Jesus. Today is another day that I can so let the light of Christ shine in my life so that 
men may see the, my good works. And what is it going to do? We don't need anybody to bow down to us because of the good works that we've done. But it will cause them to be directed in towards the attention of Jesus and glorify the Father which is in heaven. I pray that you all will stay faithful. This is a clarion call that we would stay trustworthy, that God himself can depend on you. God says to us that we are not to put any confidence in our flesh. And oftentimes there are people that will simply try to trust in their own strength. They will trust in their own willpower and trust in their own knowledge and trust in their own training and trust in their own uh, teachings. But we must trust in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Floyd there in the city of uh, Houston, Texas at Salt Mine Ministries, he oftentimes encourages the people of God there at that church to dig deep into the mysteries and the treasures of God's word. Take some time and balance. Take some time and see what it is that God would have you do in your life. I have woke up this morning. This is a new day and it may be raining on today like it was yesterday, but this is a new day. You may have heard a thunderstorm today like you did perhaps a couple of days ago, but this is a new day. And with every new day comes a new opportunity to do exploits for Jesus Christ. Again, this is Pastor P.D. Giles, and I bring to you greetings on behalf of the ministry of the Life of God International Church. We're busy rescuing the perishing. We don't have time to have long, drawn-out conversations with the enemy. Hallelujah. But we are rescuing the perishing, care for the dying, and together... I need you. Those of you that are listening, those of you that are watching us, I need you together to help us to build the body of Christ through the ministry of God's life. It's not going to be done through my own volition. It shall not be done through my own dreams and ideas, but God has given to us an anointing. And with that anointing, burdens are removed. With that anointing, yokes are destroyed and they are being destroyed because because of the anointing. It's the anointing that will truly make the difference. Perhaps there is someone that is listening on your radio or listening on your mobile phone and you desire to reach out to us here at the studio. I believe we have a few more moments and we're going to encourage you to call us right now at 972-988-988. 1040. Hallelujah. 972-988-1040. As Pastor Adams uh, in the city of Bonham, Texas, encourages us sometimes, she says, we must put our all, put all of our trust in God. Hallelujah. It cannot be in this economy. Have we not seen it? You cannot even depend on your neighborhood credit union. You cannot even depend on your neighborhood grocery store. You cannot even depend on your personal uh, bank account. Your trust must be in the Lord. And so perhaps there is someone now. You're at home. You can't get out because it's raining here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. But you are watching us or you are listening to us on your cell phone phone, you're listening to us in the confinement of your home, you want to call. and You just want a prayer partner that will stand in agreement with you. Hallelujah. We are here right now in the studio. Pick up that phone and dial us at 972-988-1040. You'll be on the call with Pastor P.D. Giles. 972-988-1040. If God is doing anything in your life and yet you know that you're on the right road, but you are faced with possible difficulties. And I know, as I said a few weeks ago, this being tax season, oftentimes we think that a great windfall has occurred in our life, but that is an opportunity. Every single time when finances come into your life. If, I, I don't care if it's a raise. Uh, well, I'm sorry, we call it today a merit increase. Whatever it may be, it is an opportunity for you to serve in a greater area as a faithful and a healthy steward. And 
so I pray that with the influx of tax refunds that will come your way, you will take the time to offer it up to God. It may seem like it is a, a magical thing. It may seem like you're involved in theatrics, but I would encourage you to offer it up unto God first. You pray over it. Hallelujah. God has given you the power to pray over that thing that has been dispersed into your hands. You pray over that refund and ask the Lord for wisdom. James, the book of James says, if any man, that means woe man also, he says, if any man will lack wisdom, let him ask of God who give it to all. If you ask me, Pastor Giles, what shall I do with this influx of money that has come my way? I may say, well, you need to pay this and you need to pay that and you need to do this and you need to put this amount there. But if you ask God, hallelujah, God will give unto you outwardly as a result of what's already happening in your spirit. Wisdom is in you. Why? Because housed in my spirit rest the presence and the divine will of God. But oftentimes we are hindered from allowing what's done in our spirit to be applicable to us in the flesh. And so what we're saying is that you pray you ask the Lord, God, I thank you. You teach me how to spin. You teach me how to put aside. You teach me how to be a good steward. Moreover, the Bible says it is required of stewards that a man, again, that means woe man as well, that a man be found faithful. You may be faithful this morning. You may be faithful to your local church on tomorrow morning for an early morning manna. But are you faithful when he finds you? You may be faithful when someone is watching you and you may be faithful when someone is viewing you or when someone is listening to you. But are you faithful when you are found? Hallelujah. Moreover, he says it is required of stewards. It is not a suggestion. It is a requirement. Faithfulness is a requirement. God requires us to be faithful unto him. And so if you're believing God for the greater, you're believing him for the miraculous, and you're believing him for supernatural overflows to take place in your life, you've got to ask yourself a question. And I know it may be embarrassing sometimes, but listen, if you perhaps feel that you may be embarrassed to say this publicly before people, go in your restroom. Hallelujah. Take your purse, take your wallet, take your whatever, your checkbook with you in the restroom. Look in the mirror and at yourself and ask yourself, have you been faithful to the Lord with your finances? This goes way beyond a 5%, 6%, 10%. We're not even talking about percentage. We are dealing with our hearts because I know people that have given to him or to his work 35% of their income, and yet their hearts are evil, yet they have maliciousness, yet they have evil in their hearts and evil in their ways, evil in their dispositions. It is not about the percentage. It is about our faithfulness. Are you willing to offer up to God and say to God, Lord, I know this is not the amount that I would love to make, but I'm so thankful unto you that because you have such an anointing, and I know I want it three times this amount. And I know, Father, I'm holding this checkbook up before you, and I may have wanted five times this amount, but because you are so awesome, you're going to show me how to make good with what I have, just as you would with five times this amount, because there's an anointing. The anointing of God is not just on the preachers and the apostles and the prophets and the bishops, nor even just simply upon the pastors, but if you've been called out, if you have been willing to believe the redemptive work of Jesus Christ. There is an anointing that rests upon you like never before. And I pray on today, on this morning, that you will be faithful to offer up to God those things that he has given unto you. It's time.
Hallelujah. You've got to tell your dollars. You've got to tell that checkbook sometimes, and I know this may be out there. Hallelujah. And everyone listening to me, you may not be where I am right now concerning that. You may not even have a grasp, understanding of where the, it takes time to get to that place. And I've had to be broken. I've had to be charred, if you will, like an olive. Hallelujah. And sometimes God will have things to crush you so that the oil of his anointing, the oil of his wisdom can come up out of you and that you may be able to know the divine precious will of God like never before. But when you get to that place in God where you literally understand that what I receive on this job is not my source. Hallelujah. Glory be unto It's just simply a channel where God uses to bring about some of his will in my life. You are not on your job just simply because God's bringing about all of his will through you, but he's using your income to bring about some of his will in your life. And when you take the time to offer that dollar up to him, you are willing to say unto him, God, I thank you. Hallelujah, that I'm bigger than this dollar. I thank you that I'm bigger than this check. God, I thank you that my business belongs to you. I praise you that my automobile belongs to you. I thank you that the home I live in, it belongs unto you. And had it not been for you, I would not be in this place now. And if you want more in your life, if you want God to give you more, it is time for us to 